Today we turn our attention to yet another component of worship, corporate worship. Uh, we've seen in the past that corporate worship are, is uh, various aspects are involved. One is music, the singing uh, of together of God's people to instruct, to in exhort, to encourage one another through singing. Music has a powerful influence in that way. A prayer is part of the public worship of God's people. We come together, and when we do, we should center our attention on God. And we can we do that most wonderfully through prayer. And prayer should be part of what we do together. And then we, we've looked at uh, the preaching of God's word, the proclamation of his word. And so all of those go back to what we find in, in Acts chapter 2, when the church gathered to do a number of things. One was to hear the word of God through the apostles, the apostles' teachings, to pray, to fellowship, uh, and to, uh, it, it doesn't say sing there. That would, that would come along later, but we assume uh, that most likely there was singing as well. But the one, one other aspect was mentioned in that text, and that was that we came together, God's people, the first church came together with the idea of breaking of bread. Of, and most would agree that perhaps they did eat together, and we know they did, but the breaking of bread was often speaking of, of the Lord's Supper itself. And so one of the aspects of worship is the Lord's Supper. And I think it's one of the, one of the most uh, focused uh, aspects of that worship. It's an opportunity for us to, to silently, quietly, calmly uh, focus our attention on what the Lord has done for us and therefore worship him in that way. It's interesting that the only true teaching concerning the Lord's Supper found in any of the epistles is in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. So if you turn there with me, uh, we do find, of course, the Lord's Supper being initiated by the Lord in the Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke in particular. But uh, all three, all four of the Gospels, we have some indications of that. But only in this particular passage does the new early church get, get taught uh, through the epistles what the supper was about. And as we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul is writing to a church that's troubled. He's writing to a church that is often going astray, and he's correcting them. So this is in, a, in the context of a correction. And, and, but in verse 23, he begins to talk about three vital things that are, are necessary when it comes to the Lord's Supper, things that we should know, things that we should focus on when we have, partake of the Lord's Supper. And the first one of those is our justification. In verse 23, he says this, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we start off with justification. Notice the, the passage here. He said he received this from the Lord. He's passing it on to us. <clears throat> and uh, he is saying that the Lord, in the night he was betrayed, took bread, saying that this body, this bread represents his body broken for them. I want you to notice it says, which is for you. We're, we're to give thanksgiving to the Lord because of what he's done for us. What has he done for us? He has died for us. He took our place. He, he, went, to the, he went to the cross for us. He gave his body for us. And so justification, the, the process by which God takes us from, from our sinfulness to his righteousness, gives us his righteousness. Uh, that is part of the Lord's Supper. And in verse 24, he speaks uh, of this as well. Verse, he, he speaks of his body, which was given for us. But verse, uh, also in verse 24, he speaks of the sacrifice. So you cannot divorce uh, what the Lord has done for us from the sacrifice he's given us. The, the Lord's Supper reminds us not only that the Lord loves us and the Lord teaches us, and the Lord has done so many things for us and will do more for us. But it also reminds us that uh, he died for us. He sacrificed himself for us. He gave his very body for us. That is the uh, act of worship. So we think about what the Lord is, is saying here. He has redeemed us from our sin to set us free from the bondage of sin. He has reconciled us to God. We were once God's enemies. Now we are his friend. We have, he has justified us, set us free from our sinfulness to give us his righteousness. 
and he's ransomed us. He paid the price for our salvation so that we could be his. What a redeemer. And the Lord's Supper reminds us of all these things as we come together to corporately worship him in that way. So it's part of our worship service. We'll look a little bit deeper at the Lord's Supper tomorrow.